All right, everybody, welcome back to the office. So uh, today, for the Q of the day, which corresponds to everything we just talked about, this was uh, from Kevin. And it was a really good question, actually multiple questions. And uh, he asks, uh, first of all, he says, Hello, Rob, uh, following your channel for a while. Thanks for the content. No problem. And in the past, he would share with us your exit strategy, which is great. I now my exit points already. Great. Uh, but now I have a question about how one would go about storing digital assets after exiting from volatile assets. I'd love to get your take on your post bull run strategy for keeping what we make, which is a good point. Keep what you make. It's not about, it's not about what you make, it's about what you keep. So he asks, would you cash out everything in fiat? And this is a, a good question. Uh, about a year ago, I would say yes. You know, I definitely just cash out all in fiat and just take my, my filthy fiat uh, as the US dollar starts to decline and just keep it in the bank. But uh, these days, I've uh, updated my thinking a little bit and uh, I'm not going to cash out totally in fiat. I don't know the percentage, but I'm going to probably cash out in USDC, maybe even Tether, and then also in US dollars. So I'm thinking about a 33% split among all three of those because uh, I need to pay bills. You know, there's some things that I need to pay. I like to pay off. Um, so I probably put 33%. So if I make a million, just a personal goal uh, for crypto, if I make a million, so it'd probably be, you know, 330,000 in USDC. 330,000 in Tether, 330,000 in US dollars, and then off I go. So that's what I would do. And the uh, next question is, would you need to pay more tax if you cash out everything opposed to cashing out incrementally? So it's better to cash out incrementally. The problem with cashing out incrementally with uh, digital assets, cryptocurrency, is that you don't know what's going to do tomorrow. So you could, like we talked about in the exit strategy, uh, you've got about 30 days to cash out on the parabolic bull run. And if you miss that, then uh, you're just holding bags for a long time. So that's the problem. Um, I would not wait too long. Um, so taxes aren't gonna be a thing. And we'll talk about that in a second. Next one is, would you store your assets in stable coins such as Tether, USDC? Yes, just talked about that. And any advantages in terms of tax, etc.? No, not that I know of because the US government's gonna know, or actually any government's gonna know uh, what, you what you cashed out or any kind of taxable event. And um, that's just one of those things. So if you've gone through different exchanges and you've done KYC, AML, you've uploaded your social or your uh, ID, trust me, your government knows. That doesn't matter if you're in America, you're in, you're in Canada, you're in any, some parts of Europe. Government knows because that's the anti-money laundering and uh, that's what all banks do. So, and then we, you know, we have to take the money and put it into you know, crypto in some way. So that's just how it goes. And uh, next one is... If you stored everything as a stable coin, you could sit on the internet using other crypto apps, so that's a nice advantage, but how would you divide your assets to lessen your risk? So I think with this one, as far as like dividing everything up, I would keep some on, on Ledger. I'd also keep uh, some on Voyager because for USDC, the interest rate is between 6 and 8%, not for sure how much it is these days, and then also on Celsius. The problem with Celsius right now, and I'm hoping they will fix this, is that USDC cannot be put into the Celsius app to gain interest. I've tried many times. I know some other parts in the United States they can. In Texas, whatever reason, I just can't do it. And uh, that's one of those things. It's, it's the same thing with Binance. People ask me, why don't you talk about Binance.us? Because you're in the US. Can't use it. I'm in Texas. That's just how it is. So, uh, But yeah, I would keep it on those hot wallets. There's a little bit of risk, but uh, without a little bit of risk, there's no reward. So I would definitely put it on there. And on the interest, because I'm not going to stick it in. Well, first of all, I can't put USDC in a bank. I can put money in a bank and get a whopping 0.0008% of whatever they're paying now. So uh, I'll put it into the hot wallet uh, for a little bit of time. Anyhow, uh, last one he says, another consideration is if you converted part of your assets into a staking coin during passive income after the bull run, what's your take on this? And I got to tell you, I think this is the most interesting aspect of everything as far as like uh, staking and DeFi and everything going the staking route. Uh, Ethereum, you're going to need 32 Ethereum uh, for staking for the ETH 2.0. It's going to take you know two years to get everything going, but um, the uh, proof of stake is for phase zero. So I don't know when they're going to actually do all that, but I would definitely be staking part of my uh, Ethereum holdings. Cardano is another massive one, and I need to get on that actually. Uh, but yeah, I would definitely do a, a percentage. I don't know. For, for you, I, it's, it's all up to you how much you want to do. Do you want to do 100%? I wouldn't do 100%, uh, especially if you know you're hitting that parabolic bull run, and you're like, "Wow, it went from, 
you know, 14 cents of Cardano all the way up to $5. I would not be staking that. I would be selling a little bit, taking profit, so I don't have that, that, that anxious part. So that's just what I would do right now. And as times change, the thinking gets evolved. And that's how we should all, you know, go about these things. It's not just about staying staunch, and be like, you got to do it this way, you got to do it this way for the next 10, 20 years. Like, I would have cash out into fiat. These days, I will probably cash out into USDC. So on top of that, the uh, I want to go to the second question, which, second, would you need to pay more tax if you cash out everything opposed to cashing out incrementally? So I want to talk about taxes again. And um, depending on, on where you're at, there's different options. Like in America, we have different options. I'm going to talk about that heavily. Uh, in Europe, there's, there's other options that you have. But the thing is, is that it doesn't matter what you make. It doesn't matter what you make. It's, it's what you keep. I remember my first year in Amazon, I thought I was making a boatload of money. And I took a look at all the different uh, taxes and fees and everything else. I'm like, shoot, I'm not making squat. And uh, you really have to update your, your thinking. So uh, we, I had talked about this, I think last week, I had made this explainer video about how you can avoid paying any taxes on any of your cryptocurrency gains. I know that sounds uh, fantastic, and it is, and it's legal, so that's why I'm going to talk about that. So if you've seen this video, uh, you can just uh, fast forward it. But uh, this is, I'm going to put this in today's video. I'm also going to uh, edit it and put it in. It's so important. I'm putting it in my essentials playlist because, again, it's not how much you make. It's how much you keep. And if you don't want to pay Uncle Sam or the tax man, wherever you're at, then, uh, then you've got to watch this uh, because, you know, who wants to pay 15, 20, 33 percent? for someone who didn't do anything. They're just robbing you blind. So this is what I'm doing. And uh, let's, uh, let's jump into that video.